Hey everyone, in this lesson, we are going to be looking at prompt generation when it comes to generating code. So first of all, AI is pretty good at basically just generating code itself, okay? You can prompt the AI to generate code in pretty much any language you want, okay? If you're using Python, C Sharp, C++, it's gonna have no worries generating code based on a sentence, on a paragraph. You could even upload an entire document uh, describing every single aspect and it will go ahead and generate the code for you. So let's look at some examples. So first of all, we can say, write a Python script to do the following. And we have one sentence, and it basically just says, load in an image, extract a color palette, and log to the console five color hex codes, okay? Uh, and just with that one sentence, that one describing sentence, it can go ahead and generate this code snippet down here, which if you can read the top paragraph and then scan through the code, you can see that it pretty much does what we are telling it to do which is pretty good because uh, for these sort of small systems, these like one function algorithms, I find that uh, the AI is generally pretty good. But once you start expanding into more complex uh, code, code that sort of has different systems interacting with each other, that's when it can sort of fall apart. So do keep uh, an eye out for that if you are looking to use AI for code generation as the larger the scope is, uh, the more prone it is to having errors, or not necessarily errors, but um, code that might not run the way that you want it to. And here is another example where we're just uh, asking it to generate a Python script that can read a text file, convert all the links to hyperlinks with HTML tags, and then save the file. And as you can see, it pretty much does it uh, as it should. Now, as well as generating the code itself, uh, the AI can also be used to basically input data into code. So for example, here I have a data set with a basically a username and points, and I want to basically put this inside of a dictionary inside of Python. Now I could go ahead, copy and pasting each one or write an entire script to read the file. But if you're just testing something out, you might want to just quickly generate something. Uh, and AI is really good at doing that. So here I have a data set and I base, and I'm basically just asking to initialize a Python dictionary with the following values. Okay, so we have the username as the key and the points as the value. And as you can see, it goes ahead and generates that right there for Python, which is really cool. And if you have a much larger data set of maybe a hundred or a couple hundred, um, it will be able to do that as well pretty much instantly. Okay, so you can see how this can be utilized for coding in various different ways. And another one of those ways is for commenting, okay? Uh, when we're coding, we like to add comments to our code to remind ourselves on what different aspects of the code are. Uh, but if you are looking at code on the internet or if you're in a group project and you're trying to read through someone else's code, um, there is a chance that there might not be comments or those comments might be quite vague. So you don't really have an understanding on what's going on. Uh, so what uh, the AI models are really good at is understanding code. And this can be done by asking it to add in comments. So here we have a section of code that we are pasting into the prompt and we are basically asking it to add comments uh, that a beginner will understand. And it will go ahead and add comments to pretty much every line, okay? Giving us quite an in-depth view of what this Python script does. So if you're learning a language, this can also be really good as it can give you a pretty good understanding of the flow of the code as well as the structure. Okay, now as well as comments, uh, the AI has quite a wide range of different programming languages that it knows of, okay? And this is really good if you want to look at converting between languages, okay? You might find a code snippet for something that you really like in JavaScript, but you want to use it in Python and you can't really find a good substitute. So instead of having to uh, be proficient in both languages, you can instead ask the AI to convert from one language to another. And as you can see here, I'm basically asking uh, the AI to convert this code from Python to C Sharp. And as you can see, it will go ahead and do it right there. Now, I do recommend that you read through the code afterwards as it's not entirely going to be um, an expert at converting between languages. And just like I mentioned before with the code generation, uh, the larger in scope the code is, then the more prone to issues it may be, okay? Um, the script we have right here is pretty small. It's only one function basically, and it's 
going to pretty much convert it one to one with no errors. But again, like I said, if you have multiple scripts, multiple classes, uh, each interacting with each other, then there are going to be some cases where generating that code is going to result in issues and converting it between two languages may also be an issue, okay? Uh, depending on the languages that you are converting between. Going from Python to C-sharp is not really an issue, but if, for example, you want to convert between a language um, that might have a different structure, you know, you might want to convert from, for example, um, one language that is object oriented to one that isn't, um, that will probably have a lot more issues and uh, is definitely something you need to keep an eye out for. But for small things like this, uh, AI is great and it is going to uh, result in scripts that pretty much run smoothly and it is able to understand them just fine. Now, when working in software development, there are going to be many times where you need data, okay? Now, this data could be collected from users, collected from the internet, yet when you are testing out your code, when you're writing it for the first time, you probably don't need these massive data sets um, that you might use in a production environment. So rather, you might want to use some placeholder data, okay? Some example names, some example email addresses, and in that case, AI can help you out, okay? Pretty much what we can do is we could just say generate a 15 record CSV file with this placeholder data. We, get, we want a username, password, and email address. And it will go ahead and generate a CSV file um, with those fields added, which is great. Okay, uh, so you can see how this could be really good at just quickly generating some data uh, for you to use in your programs to test things out. Now, as well as generating random data such as this, okay, it's randomly generating names, emails, passwords, we can also ask it to basically pull information from the internet in a way like this, okay? We can say, initialize a Python dictionary for each country in Europe with the value representing that country's population. Now, if we were to do this by hand, it would take a very, very long time. We'd have to search each country, uh, look at their population and add it to the dictionary, whereas with this, we can use an AI model which has quite a wide range of knowledge on all sort of fields, it has access to the internet, um, and it can basically spit something out like this in a matter of seconds, okay? So as you can see here, it has created a Europe population dictionary with the country as the key and the population as the value, and then we can use this in our program however we wish. And you could maybe take it one step further and say, okay, I want a dictionary now for the entire world's population for each and every country, okay? By hand, that would take forever, but with AI, you can speed that up tremendously. So that is a look at how we can use AI to help us out with code generation.